Kiss Kaminski, Bucky Clay in the foul! Welcome, basketball fans, to another season of high school basketball on FingerLakes1.com and another season of the Upstate Hoops podcast. I'm Jim Sinecropi here inside the FingerLakes1.com studios on the third floor of the North Park building in Seneca Falls, New York, for our 2019-20 season preview of Wayne Finger Lakes High School basketball. This is a pre-recorded edition. Um, I'm here on Saturday night to deliver uh, this episode to you which will premiere on Sunday morning and we're going to reveal our preseason power rankings we're going to uh, there's actually a game play last night Lions and HAC uh, kicked off the season we'll talk about that briefly we'll tell you about our plans for the FL1 sports team in terms of uh, our broadcast for this coming season so the Upstate Hoops podcast and all of our coverage of Wayne Finger Lakes High School basketball is brought to you thanks to the support of Generations Bank. The newest way to save money is also the easiest way to save money with the new MyGen Perks mobile app. Get all the details at MyGenBank.com. And by Little John Orthodontics, Dr. Rod Little John and Dr. Liz Barbie are proud to support our area high school athletes. Check out Dr. Rod and Dr. Liz online at LittleJohnOrtho.com. And Bill Cram Chevrolet, all roads lead to Bill Cram Chevrolet on routes 5 and 20 between Seneca Falls and Waterloo. Browse their full inventory of new and used vehicles at BillCramChevrolet.com. So glad you could be with me here. You know, it's a happy Thanksgiving. The holiday season about to start. That means high school basketball uh, starts. It's starting a little bit later this year, as all high school sports are, uh, about a week uh, later than they normally would. Uh, thanks to some changes from uh, the New York State Public High School Athletic Association. But there was actually a game played last night. It was Lions and HAC. And if you remember when we last met uh, talking high school basketball, uh, Lions had won the school's 19th sectional championship, I believe it was. And uh, they lost to C.J. Finney in the state play-in game in a game at Newark. Incredible basketball game. I called that with Kevin Korzineski. And um, just a great atmosphere. And as we start a new season, you know, that's what we work toward. Those huge games at the end of the year where the whole season's on the line, but everybody's setting themselves up, hopefully getting better throughout the season. And it all starts now here in late November. So Lions raised their sectional banner to the walls of the Atwood um, historic gymnasium. As I mentioned, it was the 19th, second most in all of Section 5, only second to East High. And uh, Justice Smith and David Weaver were there to do the honors, two of the seniors from last year's team. And and then they would face uh, the HAC Wolves out of the Finger Lakes West in a little crossover on um, a November 22nd opener at the Atwood. And uh, after a slow start, Lions really took over, ended up winning 86-54. It's interesting, though, um, Justice Smith era ends, and the first bucket of the game last night for Lions came, and of the season, actually, uh, in Section 5. All Section 5 came from his younger brother, Justin Smith, Tootie Smith, who... Uh, will be a, a junior this year, and Lions went up and down, uh, you know, as Coach Dean Schott will do, full court pressure all game long and uh, really pushing that ball up on offense. It's a lot of fun to watch, and they have the personnel, again, uh, to pull it off. And in a lot of ways, it's a little more interesting because jo Justice Smith was such the focal point, and rightfully so, of the offense now it seems like in the game that I caught a little bit of on Snapchat actually watched that game live and are almost live and uh, you know the ball's moving around to a lot of different guys so we'll talk about Lions a little bit here as we get into our preseason power rankings and we'll give them for the boys and the girls a couple changes this year Heading into the season, Red Creek boys, no team. So Wayne County is going to be an eight-team uh, league, much like the Finger Lakes East. And so will the Finger Lakes West, actually. I'll tell you about that in a second. But uh, the Red Creek 
boys program and it's kind of sad after they such incredible players like uh griffin and nick klein and jake slobe i mean they they were some of the best teams in red creek history and i'll never forget the game where nick klein squared off against um against uh norris in uh north rose Woolkit, a game that went into overtime that you saw live on Finger Lakes 1 where uh, Griffin Klein just uh, made a buzzer beater at the end of regulation to force overtime, ended up spoiling Tyler Norris's last game in his gymnasium as Red Creek won that game in overtime. Um, but no, they can't field a team this year, apparently, so Red Creek Rams, uh, we're not going to be talking to them on the boys' side. Uh, now, Izzy Wilbur on the girls' side is a junior this year. Seems like she's been around forever. She's been on varsity since seventh grade. Red Creek girls... Uh, playing basketball up there in the gym at Red Creek this winter. Uh, but I mentioned Finger Lakes West boys also in eight-team division now because the Marcus Whitman Wildcats and Coach Greg O'Connor are taking their show on the road playing an independent schedule. So, you know, I'm kind of torn on this. First of all, we're going to see a very good Marcus Whitman team uh, play a lot more games against competition that might be more interesting than the standard FLS, FL West schedule, a league that they've won four years in a row now, I believe. And so you're going to see them play Minders home and home, and they're going to play Lions. I think they're going to play Mid Lakes. Uh, they're going to play some uh, bigger schools. And, you know, I think their goal with this Marcus Whitman team and has been like the ultimate goal for the program uh, for the past few years is to win a sectional title. And they've had great regular seasons dominating in their league. Then they get into sectionals and um, come up against some really tough competition. I mean, North Star Christian beat them one year, so uh, part of it's bad luck. Um, but they haven't been able to follow through in the postseason and get that sectional title. Um, and I think that's what Coach O'Connor was thinking about here with this independent schedule is to prepare that team for uh, a sectional run because it's a very good team this year. Probably It's probably better than last year and probably the best team uh, it, that they've had um, heading into a year uh, since we've been covering the Wildcats here on FingerLakes1.com. So the downside is is that Red Creek's got a really good – our Red Jacket has a really good team uh, in the Finger Lakes West, and I think that that would have been a really – uh, close title race. I don't think by any means that Whitman would have, would have ran away with it. I still think they're playing Red Jacket this year um, on their schedule, but you know that's the only downside. I mean, I, I so much can change heading into a season, but I think that Red Jacket has that Finger Lakes West kind of wrapped up before it even started. I think they're clearly the best team. Whether they follow through and win, we'll have to see play the games but with with Whitman in that league I think it would have been a really good battle one two up top but like I say the good side is we're going to see a good Whitman team play against uh, some other good basketball teams so they're going to have a lot more uh, you know games of interest I think this winter so I do want to uh, you know it's tough to do a season preview like rosters aren't even posted on the league website on the Section 5 website yet. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, you really got to even do some research to figure out if the if it's this year's roster or last year's because they all say 19, 2019, 2020, but um, clearly some of them are last year's rosters featuring some of the uh, some of the players from um, seniors from last year. So so it is difficult to cover, um, and every year is different. You know, Phil Abel, I think, is is going to have some scoring on um, highschoolsportsstats.com, I think it is. Um, he's, I know he's doing Section 3. I thought he was doing Section 5. There's nothing posted there yet. The website the league's using is really good and functional. It's the same thing as the girls have been using for years. So there's a lot of stats on there if coaches participate and post it. And it's, but I can get a, at least a score posted in a timely manner. I mean, that tends to be the problem in terms of trying to get you these nightly score reports on Finger Lakes 1. Sometimes we've got to go searching and texting and um, certainly prefer not to do that if everyone just posted their score after the game. And But the other weird thing is that the URL that, that Section 5 Boys Basketball Sites add is Section5Soccer.net or something strange. So, I mean, 
I don't know, man. I wish it got it together a little tighter. But, again, every year it's like this. We have to wait a week or two into the season to kind of see how it's going to go. But you can help for sure. Send us scores if, if you're in the gym. Um, you know, send us videos of that last second shot. Send us photos from inside the gym um, when you're at a game. I mean, we appreciate everything that you can give us in terms of information and media that we can then reshare on this podcast, some of our broadcasts, and in our nightly score reports at FingerLakes1.com. You can text those to 315-651-7500. Great way to do it, too, is to tweet at us. Uh, we're at FingerLakes1 on Twitter, the number one. And uh, you can also email us at contact at fingerlakes1.com. A lot of folks take pictures of the scorebook and either tweet it or, excuse me, text it over or email it over. Uh, that's a big help because then we have every stat. We know every single thing that happened in that game if we can get a picture of the book. So help us out this year. Um, it's, it's not easy, uh, but we're trying to give you the best coverage we can of uh, high school basketball. So if you kind of get involved in our network and, and can get us some of that information in media, we're certainly going to try to use it in a way that uh, highlights these local high school athletes and helps all of us understand the uh, or be able to follow you know, Wayne Finger Lakes high school basketball. So uh, let's get into it. Let's start with the girls' side of things, just a quick run-through, and then I'm going to give you the power rankings. And one theme, and this is true on both boys and girls, is there's no dominant teams like last year. He had Midlakes heading into the season, and they returned to the state Final Four before falling in the title game. Um, and on the boys' side, you had the Lions. Lions uh, with Justice Smith, a surefire, you know, sectional pick, and then with hopes to go into states. And you had the two-time sectional uh, A2 defending champs, Wayne Eagles, with that big you know, three, four uh, seniors uh, that had been together forever uh, that, uh, you know, so going into the season, we had these teams that we knew were going to be great. They were going to be really good teams, and uh, and they didn't disappoint. Um, you know, it's really diff would have been amazing if Wayne was to win three A2 sectional titles in a row. They fell a little short in the semis, and then uh, – you know, Lions did get that sectional title and uh, fell in the state qualifier. And Midlakes went all the way back to Hudson Valley, which to me was amazing. I mean, that team was every bit as good as the year before, uh, but still to do it, to get back there, uh, all the way to the state title game. So I don't think there's any teams that stand out that where those are expectations this year. But every year, once – you see some of these teams on the court, things happen that you didn't realize because we're dealing with such young kids. A lot of times, you know, eighth or ninth graders getting a year older, ninth or tenth graders getting a year older, and they can make such an improvement. So we can't see how hard these kids work in the off season, uh, but when the play starts, then you start to see it, and we start to change some of our expectations. So these power rankings um, – our preseason power rankings, and a lot of thought went into them, but with limited info and um, without being able to see a lot of people play that are probably going to make an impact. So, you know, looking um, at the girls this year, I you got Bloomfield, uh, Coach Mike Schunk has uh, Jessica Sheehan back. Uh, Clyde Savannah is super young. Uh, Coach Dunn has uh, Madison Secor, Jaded uh, Jarrett Larson, uh, Ashley Retray, Kelsey DeSanto, these are all, I believe, ninth graders, tenth, ninth or tenth graders, very young. Um, but I like the program that they've been building in, in Clyde over the past couple of years on the girls' side. Um, Williamson will be looking at Katie Newby and Kayla Brennan. North Rose Wolcott has uh, Ava Norris as a sophomore on that team this year. Um, Sotis returns a senior-related team uh, led by Tiana White. Uh, Gananda and Kara Mewis, and they had some big losses with uh, Peyton Daffler and Emma Drake. Uh, but they return Ashley Crum and Lindsay Wonder, and always a good girls basketball team in Gananda. Uh, Romulus looking at their roster for 
coach. I believe Charlie Luffman's coaching the Lady Warriors this year. Um, I think we're going to see some good matchups between the Romulus girls and South Seneca girls this year. It's been one-sided for a while, and before that it was Romulus who won the state title. So a couple of pretty legendary small schools in Southern Seneca County, that they should have a good matchup this year. Brianna Guerri, uh, Daniel Gorlick, Hannah Mingus, Ms. Marissa Laird, uh, Megan Litzenberger, Kiara Woody. Um, these are all names that contributed and are uh, going to be back this year in Romulus. East Rochester girls are always tough for head coach Mark Florek, uh, Zoe Zoot, Sarah Stone, uh, Paulina Lexer, uh, Sydney Freeberger, and Olivia Ratchetori. Again, East Rochester, much like Gananda, generally pretty strong girls basketball team every season. And AJC brings back Zoe Crago, Amelia Gugino, Eliza Nicosia. Um, these are names that made an impact next year. We'll see if they can improve this year. Um, and Dundee has uh, the 5'10", Haley Knapp. Uh, Anna Bratley, also at 5'10", Mackenzie Strait, Mackenzie Cratsley. I believe all these girls are back uh, again for Coach uh, Strait in Dundee. And then you you got the Geneva girls that lost a ton, including Lauren Devaney and seven seniors. Now, I'm talking about teams that aren't in our power rankings right now, and I just mentioned Geneva. That could change pretty quick. They usually are able to draw some talent in, but, you know, looking at what they lost and the uncertainty of what's coming in, and uh, you know, we're going to wait and see. They're, they're starting the season outside our power rankings. Uh, is a B1 school. They're going to be upper B1, I think, this year. Classifications. Try to get some information on that, too, for you for next episode. Uh, Wayne and Coach Lance Daffler, uh, Andre, uh, a or Adriana Brent, and uh, Isabella Cellini, uh, Elia Zanelovic. Uh, but um, after a down year last year, uh, lost, lost a lot there, too. Um, but now we get into the top ten. And talk about a team that lost a lot over the past couple of years. How about South Seneca and Coach Heather Mott? Uh, coming in at 10, but they return Logan Shawless, and uh, I really like watching Logan play, and, you know, it's it's uh, she'll be entering, I believe, her junior year this year, and she'll have Leah, Alyssa, and Emma Fletcher alongside, so undersized, but pre very talented, Alyssa Kenyon, Haley Bentley um, at the Jack Guinan Arena this year. Again, South Seneca had won three straight sectional titles before falling last year um, in Victor in the semifinals. Uh, or was it the finals? Either way, uh, Jenna McDonald, Jade Parsons have graduated, and it's going to be a new look Seneca, South Seneca program that I think heads into this season for the first time without the expectations that perhaps they could make a state run or at least would be considered sectional favorites. Uh, Red Creek for Coach Mike Krause coming in at ninth. Izzy Wilbur, as I mentioned off the top, she's a junior in her fifth year varsity. Uh, Jenny Easling, Jesse Bolton, Riley Schaefer. Uh, Red Creek should be tough this year. Um, and uh, speaking of red, how about eight red jacket with Coach uh, George Hotchkiss? Sydney Close, finally a senior. She's been there forever, too. Mackenzie Shardle as well, going to be uh, a tough team. And then at seventh, we got Minders Academy, um, going to be led by sophomores Mackenzie Higby and Bridget Miller. Uh, Bridget, of course, Heidi's younger sister. I know that both of those girls work extremely hard. I can't wait to see the improvement um, as they hit the court this year. Uh, Sydney Sandroni, Josh, Joshlyn Manzel, I, there's there's others, but they do lose. Uh, Caitlin Korzineski was supposed to be a senior on the team, injured in soccer, um, hoping to get back by lacrosse season maybe, but not uh, going to be playing basketball this year. And um, they're bringing up a ninth grader, Haley Mosh, who's uh, very brings some size, um, and she's going to be playing varsity. It will be interesting to see the impact she has. Gretchen Prine, also last year's starting point guard, is not on the team, uh, moved to Baldwinsville. And so for Coach uh, Anderson and this Minders uh, girls team, it should be interesting to see how they hold up and what is a league as a whole that's down in the Finger Lakes East this year compared to, to last year, I think. So they're coming in at seven. Uh, Lions uh, really – had a great season last year and, and want to build on that. Uh, Coach Kristen Bassett does got Caden Crago, uh, is a senior this year, Latavia Blaisdale, Monty Harder, Mara Briggs, Alicia Morrison, Caitlin McDonald, 
Uh, so not just the boys having success lately in the Atwood. Uh, I like that Lions girls team. At fifth, uh, Marcus Whitman, Bry Parza coaching. Uh, Mandy Ryan at 6 1. Uh, is it, I believe it's her junior year this year. Ari Beverly, Katie Dethridge, Emily Paddock. That's another place that's been building a program uh, kind of in the shadow of the boys and Marcus Whitman. Uh, they are not playing an independent schedule. They're in the Finger Lakes West, and, and they're going to contend, I think, uh, for that league, which is pretty wide open. And then at four, I got Newark with. Uh, Coach Justin Flad, uh, Kayla Bryant, uh, Isabella Santel, Michaela Colosino, um, generally a pretty strong program. Uh, been down a little bit since the uh, the Twins there that used to play there. Uh, I'm missing missing their name here, but anyways, uh, Newark's at four, Mid Lakes at three. Been owning that top spot for the past couple of years. Uh, Lena Forbes on Denigra. Uh, community college and uh, coach Nate Rich and, and assistant coach Todd Jones works pretty hard with a lot of these girls so that's why I'm ex always excited to see the individual improvement for for these girls and now it's Kara Walker's team she's a junior she's been a part of both those state uh, final four runs and now it's pretty much uh, the leader of this team and she's got her younger sister along Kelly Walker who's entering her freshman year who brings a lot of size and she also had that experience of being on that Final Four team last year and playing in that state title game. And so coming in as a freshman, probably a little more experienced than your average freshman. Uh, Madison Nurse is a senior. Lydia Day is a senior. So we'll see uh, how that Midlakes team looks without um, you know the engine of Elena Forbes and uh, Macy Kisner uh, also is going to be a big loss. But uh, we'll see how it goes for the Lady Screaming Eagles. Number two, Waterloo. Coach Mike Bree uh, brings back Caitlin Jolly. Jillian Panic has been on uh, varsity since eighth grade. She's entering her senior year. Uh, Janie Abbott, Ellie Smith, Mackenzie Barber is a junior this year. She was really tough last year. Giovanna White Principio is uh, a sophomore now, probably going to be one of the better number fives in the league. Tabitha Winter, Macy Carr, and they got some freshmen on this team. Jasmine Lewis, who played last year and made an impact as an eighth grader, but also Morgan Carballo, who uh, is a quick little point guard that's um, – Supremely talented, great basketball player. It'd be interesting to see what kind of impact she's able to make and what kind of court time she's going to get in what's a really deep, talented roster uh, for Waterloo. Natalie DeSanto, another freshman uh, who's up this year. And and this is a team that um, is going to contend for the Finger Lakes East and is going to contend for a sectional title. I just think that they're they're pretty strong. I think Coach Bree's doing a great job. And then number one to start the year for our power rankings, it's going to be Pal Mack, uh, Katie Smythe, senior year, Tatum Smythe, sophomore Andra Savage, Grace Seether, Emma Kelly. Uh, I think Dan Harris is still coaching out there. And um, after a great season, they beat Midlakes last year. Um, this year they return a good portion of their roster, and uh, they're going to start the season here as the uh, number one team in our power rankings. And let me see if I can get that up for you right now so you can see them all. There you go. Um, again, Palmap, Waterloo, Midlakes, Newark, so four Finger Lakes East teams. Then you got Whitman, Lions, West, Wayne, more Finger Lakes East and Minders, more West and Wayne to round it out. And, um, you know, I didn't even mention Penyan. Jeez, uh, you know, I, I this time of year, those power rankings could certainly um, shuffle after just uh, a week or two once we get to see some of these teams on the court. So... Let's get ready to switch it over here to the boys' side and talk about the boys. Just trying to get things set the table for this. Okay. Mentioned no basketball in Red Creek this year. Um, Marion graduated 13 seniors from last year off a team that didn't have much success. Um, again, there's a program that was once uh, sent teams to the 
state championship in Glens Falls. And uh, we'll see if that program can start an upswing this year. Romulus, uh, you know, the smallest school that we cover at D2. Uh, Coach Joe Pisnack uh, returned some uh, players. Mike Kaufman, just a freshman. Uh, Camden Derby, senior year. Dan Reyes, senior. Luke Wilwer, a senior. Let's see. Um, and there's another team, Romulus, that if you go back to, um, you know, the 80s and 90s, had some really good uh, – boys teams uh, honey oy uh, graduated tyler rudolph one of the better big men that they've had in a while of course they went all the way to the sectional finals two years ago where they lost to clyde and they returned dom trippy for his senior year and naples lost certainly lost a lot for coach lieben trip uh, cole rath been gone nick clearman nick green um, but they returned Ben Fowler and Ben Green, and we'll see what kind of basketball happens down there for the Big Green Machine. Uh, Coach Serrano in uh, South Seneca. Uh, you know, Anthony Ruff's back for his senior year. Matt Kenyon's a junior. Pete Trim's a senior. Jack Mott, Nick Houck. We'll, you know, we'll see what happens for, for South Seneca. Boys, uh, North Rose Wool kit, Quentin Norris is a junior, uh, Tyler's younger brother. They got a really young roster, and so that means that, you know, I don't know what to expect, so I'm looking forward to see uh, North Rose Wool kit on the court. Uh, Bloomfield and Coach John Maston lost a ton last year, and Alex Roach and um, Tanner Kimball. Uh, Simon Willie's back, though, for his senior year, along with Adam Sheehan, and we'll see what the Bombers bring. Uh, Midlegs coach A.G. Raleigh brings back um, some good guards in Van Ostrand, uh, Ryan Springer, uh, McCann, Kyle McCann, Nate Mahoney. Um, these are guys that were significant contributors next year. Um, they lack some size, and but uh, what they lack in size, they do have some experience. Uh, East Rochester coach Walsh. Returns Alan Otero, well, maybe one of the best players in the league this year, um, and all the way in Finger Lakes. Um, and he'll have uh, Chuck, Chuck Dom and Alex Hartman alongside. Uh, so we'll see what East Rochester does. Clyde Savannah, uh, Darren Preston settling in his second year as head coach. Cam Chance is a junior now. Noah Rattray, senior. Uh, Jada McKinney, junior. Steve Dunn, a junior. Hunter Donsler. I think that we're going to see a better Clyde team this year than we saw last year, and I think that um, I think that Lions Clyde game, you know, last year it wasn't even a, it was off the books, you know, and they didn't have a line on it because it was a pre determined and I think Lions would be heavy favorites this year but I wouldn't be surprised if one of those two matchups specifically maybe the one in Clyde is um, is within reach for the Golden Eagles late in the game. Uh, Coach Marty Gibson at Penn Yan uh, returns Pete Nicholson, Kyle Berna, Griffin Emerson and Dominic Lafferty uh, and then now we get into the top 10. Those are teams that, fin that are starting outside our power rankings and coming in at 10 I got Gananda and Coach Jeff Thompson Big losses in Jaden Castricini, uh, Tim McClare, their big man in the middle, and Cole Wright. But maybe the best one-two guard punch in the Finger Lakes, especially in terms of uh, kids that are fun to watch play. Uh, Andrew Gabbard and Jerry Brongo, a couple of juniors with a ton of experience, especially Gabbard. Uh, uh, Brongo got a lot of minutes last year, and... Uh, he's, he's a fun kid to watch play. And the Blue Panthers... Uh, if they can fill some gaps around uh, Bronco and Gabbard, uh, might be better than than tenth. Uh, coming in at ninth, I have Sotis. Uh, Coach Hawk brings back a really good, talented team. I mean, I, I'm surprised looking at the roster of this team last year. They didn't win more games. Um, this year, you know, Lonnie Logan's is another top player candidate. Uh, player of the Year type candidate, uh, John Molisani, Marquise Burton, Marcellus Burton, um, a lot of talent in SOTUS. You know, I, 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 we're going to hopefully get a look at them on FL1 Sports this year, um, we'll, and we'll see if they can put something together and try to bring uh, a little resurgence to that uh, Spartans program. And then at uh, number eight, we got Wayne, the Wayne Eagles, one of the top teams in our power rankings all last year, the past few years, uh, Coach Bill Thompson. Is uh, of course, you know, Carmichael gone, Hogado gone, uh, Bill Thompson, um, Billy Thompson Jr. gone, uh, Logan Blankenberg gone, 
um, Jaden Burley gone. I mean, they, they, they really cleared out a team, a, a stud team that they've had that resulted in, with that group in a couple of sectional championships in Class A, too. Uh, but they do bring back Nathan McKenna and Brian Sills. Alex Bolt is a junior. I'm assuming that's Tommy Bolt's brother. Alex Tomaselli uh, at 6'3", a junior coming in. And then a kid that I really liked watching playing JVs, who I think is going to be um, – could be as good as his brother, um, but that would he'd have to get off to a good start in his sophomore year because it was uh, Logan Blankenberg's sophomore year where he really started to stand out. So Mason Blankenberg um, kicks off his varsity career this year uh, for Coach Bill Thompson. And then at 7, I got the Minders Academy Blue Devils. <laughs> Pat Prain taking over for Kevin Korzineski. Uh Korzy's going to be back in the booth for some games for us, so that's good. <clears throat> and, of course, Prain, Prainy... Uh, Great coach. He's been in the. He coached them to a sectional title through two two years ago in the Blue Cross Arena, um, and you know, Minders is the smallest school in the Finger Lakes East, which is I wonder. You know, my, maybe Whitman instead of going independent, maybe they moved back to the East. They used to be in the East, but uh, Minders the smallest school in the east and there's potential there for this team to be better than seven but they there's potential that it could be worse that we could be maybe overrating them here a little bit but they got a senior point guard and griffin heron going to be one of the leaders of that team uh nate seeley going to be asked to step up probably this year I, nate's about six four six five of course darren miller out the door um and sal fran's own so they're going to be looking for some size inside and nate seeley hopefully will be that guy of course nobody's asking nate seeley to be um you know darren miller um that's just not fair uh darren was was he's playing down in alfred uh right now but uh they also minders has a ton of, of great guards who are getting older and you always look to see that improvement so you know nick jones it has some size and some talent, and so now he's an upperclassman. We're going to see how how he's progressed. Jared King uh, has an unbelievable motor. If you ever watch him play, it's like 100 miles an hour, like all game. He doesn't get tired. He just keeps going, uh, a physical defender, and um, he's a junior now. And then one of the, I think one of the most overlooked guys in, in the Finger Lakes East uh, in terms of how valuable he is on the court is Jake Smith. So Jake's entering his junior year after what I thought was a great sophomore campaign. Here's a kid that takes care of the ball, uh, plays defense, tough as nails, can score, never is relied upon to score, but can score. And, um, you know, good passer, takes care of the ball, just a really solid player to have out there uh, for minders. And now I think that as far as minders goes, that a lot of the – um, questions about how good this team could be are going to be on the backs of a couple of sophomores that are entering their second varsity year season. And, you know, you always hope to see tremendous improvement. Both showed great flashes last year as freshmen of what might be to come in the future. Uh, one of those kids is uh, Troy Cabot, who's got a great outside shot. Maybe, you know, one of the better uh, open three-point shooters that we'll see this year. So he's going to have to provide some scoring as a sophomore for this team to be good. And then um, Mike Bogart, who uh, is dunking now um, easily in practices as a sophomore, um, is another one of those guys that's going to have to use, you know, replace the size that they lost in Darren Miller and for Sale Fran's own. Um, you know, again, nobody's asking Mike Bogart to do what Darren Miller did, but if he can continually improve uh, not only from last season to this season, but um, as the season goes on, this team could be pretty good. Uh, so looking forward to uh, watching the Blue Devils this winter. Uh, at number six, I have Coach uh, Trevor Gage's Red Jacket Indians. They lost to Lions in the Blue Cross Arena last year, but returned all those guys. So Chase Rizzo's back, and they have size. Chase Rizzo, 6'3". Travis Hill, 6'5". Uh, Matt Records, a junior. Mason Pollard, sophomore. And I think there's going to be some really good stuff going on with this Red Jacket Indian team this year. They're coming in at number six. And then at number five, I've got the Marcus Whitman Wildcats and Coach Greg O'Connor, independent 
not in the Finger Lakes West. We're covering them as a Wayne Finger Lakes team, uh, but they are not competing in the Wayne Finger Lakes leagues this year. We're going to be playing a lot of Wayne Finger Lakes teams um, in addition to a lot of Rochester teams uh, looking at their schedule. But um, probably they do lose John Donovan, which is a big loss, but they return so much back uh, and so many underclassmen that are now upperclassmen. Um, and you got Liam Prendergrast at six foot four in his senior year. Maybe he might have grown a little bit in the offseason, too. He might be six five now, but uh, certainly the dominant big man, along with uh, Travis Hill for Red Jacket um, in the finger or the former Finger Lakes West. Uh, Seth Benedict is back as a senior year. Here's a competitor um, that, that he's just a winner, and uh, I think that. Uh, it, He's, he's a solid all-around player. Lacrosse is his number one sport, but a great athlete, great competitor, uh, tremendous drive uh, out of Benedict. And then uh, now I'm going to name some names, and you're going to might say to yourself, why is Marcus Whitman only fifth? Maybe they should be higher. Ryan Harad, Aiden Royston, uh, Noah Hildreth, and uh, Connor Tomian as a sophomore, and John Donovan, I mentioned, graduated, but uh, Jordan Lehew, uh played great last year. Uh, and, and I think he's going to step right into the role as point guard, and I really don't see this Whitman team missing a beat. I think Lehu is another one of those slightly underrated players last year because of his age that um, this year it's going to be his show at the point, I think. And uh, I think that uh, it's a deep, experienced, uh, slight, slightly undersized, although with Pendergrass there it kind of evens things out on, in that regard. For a team that's probably going to be, uh, when I see the classifications, either C1 or maybe B2. I th There might even be three Bs this year and only two Cs. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. Um, i got to get that information for you. But uh, good Whitman team for sure. And um, then I look at the Geneva Panthers. Uh, Coach Brian Miller. Uh, stepping aside, uh, JV coach Matt Desering stepping up. So his first year as varsity coach. And here's a team that lost a lot. Of course, they lost Reed Patchett. They lost Akeem Hudson. Um, but they return a lot, a lot of guards. So Nick Askin, Liam Ryan, going to be the man in the point guard is one of the best uh, floor generals in the Wayne Finger Lakes. Uh, Jagger Kurzbeck, Nick King, Parker Bossard, uh, Kaya Parara. These are all contributors from last year. Um and again, that's a lot of guards, you know, not a lot of size there to replace the size they lost with Hudson and Patchett. But Wyatt Patchett steps into his junior year at six foot four, and I've heard some good things about Wyatt, and I think that this Geneva team is going to be good. That's why we've got him up there at four in our power rankings. And then we move up to three, and we've got the Lions. Lions and Coach Dean Schatz lose, a, you know, once, once a decade – player like Justice Smith and um, still able to warrant this top three ranking. It just says a lot about the program and um, the respect, you know, that we that we give them here at Finger Lakes One. Uh, Tootie Smith, Justin Smith, Justice's younger brother, he's, he's the best athlete in the Wayne Finger Lakes, period, you know. Also a very good basketball player that uses athleticism um, in the game opener against uh, HAC last night. He had a nice baseline pull-up jumper with a guy in his face. Um, <coughs> he's uh, he's going to be a lot to handle for teams in Wayne County, that's for sure. And one of the big reasons why this team is among those contending for uh, sexual favorites this year, even after losing players uh, like Justice Smith and David Weaver. Uh, Horace Betts is a junior now, expected to provide a lot for this Lions team in terms of scoring. Amir James is a junior. Benji Bad Company Kemp is back. And uh, you tell me that that doesn't form a pretty good nucleus of a, of a basketball team and a fun basketball team to watch. And uh, they got a, the right, a right kid. Uh, they, can't think of his first name off the top of my head, but Wright is up. He's going to make an impact on this Lions team uh, from JV's last year. And uh, I think Lucas Lucier was back, I heard, but he didn't play last night. Uh, you know, if they could get Lucier back on the court, then they really got something. I, I think a lot about this Lions team here at number three. 
And uh, then at number two, we're going with the Newark Reds and Coach uh, Henry Caparis. Devin Augusto coming in at six foot five. Uh, word on the street is a lot of improvement this year, and he's going to have more opportunity to uh, take the leadership role on this team. And then Josh Green at six three. Remember Josh? He's back and. Word on the street is that maybe he might play a little point guard this year. So imagine the matchup uh, problems that creates at six foot three. Uh, Nick Bernardi, Dustin and Blade Case, uh, Adam Lombardi's a junior. Um, Isaiah Camp, Newark is always good. Uh, rare is the year that they're down and not contending for the East or being talked about in terms of sectionals. And uh, I think this team is going to be a lot better than maybe people thought because of some of the losses that they incurred last year uh, on their roster in the past few years. You know, but that's high school basketball. So when you got a good program, you're pretty much good year in and year out. Um, and that leads us to the number one team in our power rankings. So you want to try to rack your brain and think about who maybe I didn't mention, uh, but. It's going to be the Waterloo Indians. New head coach Tim Darnell coming over from Union Springs. Word on the street, old school type coach, disciplinarian. <clears throat> I think it's kind of what this program needs. Mark Pitifer did an amazing job last year in terms of reinvigorating that program. Um, and Waterloo games were among the most fun to, to watch or go to last year. Uh, whether it was home or away. But with that, there did come a lot of um, off-the-court or on-the-court incidents, but incidents, suspensions, things that resulted in suspensions. And for that team that had such a great year last year in Waterloo and you know created so much excitement, they didn't win the league. They took a, a first or second round exit from sectionals. Uh, too much talent Waterloo for that to be the case this year. I think that if they buy in to Coach Darnell, which I obviously am kind of predicting they're going to, given them the top spot here in our power rankings, um, it could be a special team. You know, beyond just the excitement and the hype of last season with the bands and the full houses that you haven't seen in Waterloo at the Spo Center in a long time, um, or maybe ever. So who's on this team? Well, first of all, Julian Ruiz is a senior. John Lawrence is a senior. Um, both exciting, talented players to watch. Uh, Nick Champion, Dylan McCann, uh, Mike Hubbard, and Joel Kraft. I love Mike Hubbard and Joel Kraft. I love those two kids in terms of um, just, I think, the quality of basketball players that they are and how important they can be to this team because this team does have guards. Um, Joel Kraft and Mike Hubbard can really um, – you know, provide some of that much-needed interior play, although um, Hubbard especially can play away from the basket as well. But um, going to be very important uh, components to this team, Kraft and, and Hubbard. And then, of course, Derek Saluka graduates, so now there's only one Saluka. It's Kyle. And uh, Kyle's stepping into his junior year. He played a ton, obviously, as a sophomore and made an incredible shot against Geneva that uh, will go down as maybe one of the shots of the year last year to send that game into overtime. Or was it to win? I think that was to maybe win the game, um, falling out of bounds from the hash mark in front of his bench. Uh, and I think that shot goes in because I think that's the type of player he is. So when you have a player like Kyle Saluka who isn't afraid of the big stage and is going to do the improbable, which I think, which that's the type of player I think he is. I think, you know, looking at Derek, you watch him play his older brother who's now graduated, and you can just see, geez, how talented and athletic he is. Kyle's a little smaller than Derek. Uh, Derek did a lot of dunking. I don't know if we're going to see Kyle dunk this year, but um, Kyle has that something about him that um, if this team can come together under Coach Darnell, it's a good team, that, then they can win a section, their first sectional title since 1972. And that's where I get it last year with all the excitement of Waterloo being back. You really don't want to go that long without winning a sectional title, right? Um, that's prodigiously long. And they had a chance to do it last year. Um, they had some kids suspended throughout the different points of the year and then at the actual end of the year heading into those sectional games and um you know i i 
think it hurt their opportunity to make a run, but this team can do it. So, you know, why not show you the preseason uh, boys, Wayne Finger Lakes power rankings here. And there you have it. Gananda Sotis, Wayne Minders, Red Jacket, Whitman, Geneva Lions, Newark, and Waterloo. Whew. So, as usual, when I don't have a guest, I do a lot of talking. And before I get out of here on a Saturday night so I can catch the rest of that Syracuse football game, is, uh, you know, you're going to be watching this on Sunday morning if you watch it when we premiere at our normal time. We're probably not going to do an episode next Sunday, just not enough happening yet. Uh, but then we'll return the following Sunday and try to go pretty regularly at uh, either at 9 a.m. on Sunday, um, heading through the rest of the winter. And before you know it, it'll be spring. Um couple other things I want to talk about, though. FL1 Sports, every year, uh, you know, actually, it's somebody asked me, hey, are you, cover, are you doing live games this year? And I'm like, of course, of course. We're not setting the schedule, though, like we have in years past. Last year, we experimented with a little flexing of the schedule. This year, we're, we're scheduling like one or two weeks out. You know, we're going from there because there's too much unpredictability right now about what games are going to be important as we get closer to the end of the year and what teams that we want a chance to get a look at here on Finger Lakes 1. So we're flexing it. Our first game, which I guess I'm announcing now, uh, our first webcast is going to be Saturday, November 30th at South Seneca High School. It's a South Seneca girls tip-off tournament. We're doing night two, the consolation and championship games. Um, you're looking at it's going to be – uh, South Seneca, the host, Palmac, number one team in our girls' power rankings. South Seneca, ten Minders coming in at the pearl rank uh, power rankings for the girls as well. I think they were at seven. And um, Weedsport out of Section Three. That's where former Lions head coach Zach Young is now athletic director. So Weedsport, Palmac, South Seneca, Minders all going to kick off the year for us on Finger Lakes one next Saturday, November thirtieth. First games at four o'clock. Second game. Oh, probably around uh, 5.45. So, uh, you know, settle in. Make your plans now to stream us live on your uh, big screen TV. Uh, get a little early dinner. Settle in and uh, enjoy some live Finger Lake, Wayne Finger Lakes High School basketball on Finger Lakes 1 from the comfort of your home. Dave Barnard, Mike Alessio will have the call for that one. So looking forward to getting the season underway. And then I can announce now that we're also going to be at that Newark. Waterloo is at Newark uh, the following week. Uh, geez, I want to say December 5th. I can't remember the date off the top of my head. But we're going to be at that Waterloo-Newark game as well. I'm going to call that game with Kevin Korzaneski. So that'll be fun. Um, and some other changes this year. Nate Sharman going to be doing some play-by-play uh, -play play work for us. We're going to do some radio-only games throughout this winter to give us a chance to just get, get out in more gyms and get you more live coverage. Um, and so Nate Sharman's going to be heading up a lot of those radio broadcasts um, on play-by-play. -play. I want to welcome, I want to just make note of uh, that at Finger Lakes 1, we've had a new sports editor here for a while. Um, not the head guy, I guess that's still me, but uh, someone who's uh, really been contributing a lot to our sports coverage on Finger Lakes 1. Maybe if you've noticed an improvement over the past few months, but Kyle Evans um, is going to be handling the nightly score updates and uh, that we post at Finger Lakes 1 and all the aggregation of the standings and, and, and everything involved with that. So Kyle will be bringing you that. He might also be involved in some broadcasts. Kevin Korzaneski is going to be back in the booth now that he's not heading up that Minders boys team. Um, I, he's doing some uh, work towards his, uh, I don't know what you call it, administration degree as is, is a is school administrator. Um, he's... Uh, so, and he, he and Coach Pat Brain, good friends. So it's not a situation where he's leaving anybody in a bad situation. Uh, Coach Brain obviously was the assistant last year, and the year before that coached him a uh, second half of the season to a sectional title. But Corsi going to be back in the booth, which I love because he's one of my favorite guys to call a game with or to listen to call a game in general. Um, a lot of knowledge, a lot of excitement. Um, and Matt Metley uh, covers 
high school basketball for the Finger Lakes Times, also going to be on board with us uh, doing some uh, work on our broadcasts. So uh, in terms of upgrades, we got new graphics packages, stuff like that. Um, we got a second, we, we, we got another good camcorder, uh, prosumer camcorder for our second cam. So now it matches our first cam. And we have the ability to go totally wireless with that. So our second cam is going to be mobile. It's going to be bouncing around the gym. You're going to see a lot more uh, different angles and shots of, of games this year. And then finally... Um, as far as our sponsors go, we, we can still use your sponsorship. If you want to get involved, support what we do, support our coverage of these student athletes in Wayne Finger Lakes, and get a ton of promotion um, out there as, as our viewership last year was continues to grow on our live games and this podcast. is. Uh, but we'd like to get that over the next couple days. If you're interested, same way you would send us scores, you can email, contact at Finger Lakes 1. You can uh, text that number. Um, don't call that last number on there. That's, uh, I don't know why that's up there, but that is no longer the case. So, so yeah, we would love, we would love, um, to add you to our sponsors, promote your business, you know, all winter long, uh, throughout all these communities and gymnasiums, uh, throughout the Finger Lakes. Um, you can email Sydney Rogers at Sydney at fingerlakes onecom That's Sydney like the city in Australia, S Y D N E Y at fingerlakes onecom And uh, we can get you on board, but it's gonna but we're running short here. We're gonna have to be in the next couple uh, days as our season kicks off on Saturday at the Jack Gunning Arena in South Seneca. It's a place we've been uh, many times before. Dave Barnick on the call with Mike Alessio. So here we go, everybody. It's another season of high school basketball on FingerLakes1.com. Glad you could be with me here to kick it off. And, uh, you know, I always pause a little bit at the beginning of the year. Uh, I think we know, I think we got a lot of answers about a lot of teams and players, and but, you know, no, there can be... Kids can get so much better at this age that they're at now between the last time we saw them in February or March to the next time we see them coming up here in the next few weeks. And so that's always exciting to see how much, um, who's improved and then kind of how things shake out. It'll take a couple of weeks and we're going to get a good feel for what the season's going to look like. But every single season we've done it, there's always been some sort of story or um, special team or teams that you know we are able to stay with and follow right through to the end whether it's going to we used to go to Glens Falls um, in Binghamton now I think they're going to Binghamton again this year maybe they're going back to Glens Falls for the boys and the girls in Hudson Valley um, or all those games in the Blue Cross Arena you know who's going to make it to the Blue Cross on the boys side and who's going to play for sectional titles on the girls side there's always um, a good number of teams from the Wayne Finger Lakes that represent, and that's what's exciting is trying to see who those contenders are and see if they can improve throughout the year and get better and get into that uh, uh, shape to be a sectional champion type team. So that's going to do it for me here tonight. Thanks for joining us on the Upstate Hoops podcast. Connect with us on Twitter at Finger Lakes One. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Seriously, if you want all this content and all our live games, um, click the red subscribe button right now, and you're going to. It'll just be a lot easier. It'll come right to you every time you're on any YouTube connected device. You'll get the notifications and everything. It's the easiest way to connect with us. Make sure you're not missing any of our live coverage or anything that we do here on this podcast. Our audio only podcast is available on iTunes and Stitcher.com, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever uh, you consume podcasts and archive episodes are available at fingerlakes1.tv this podcast airs weekly on finger lakes tv spectrum channel 1304 it used to be 12 now it's 1304 a little bit harder to find uh, you can also find our show live stream games and local news weather and sports 24 7 on the free fingerlakes1.com android or iphone app so thanks for joining us hang on here we go it's another season of high school basketball on FingerLakes1.com. Hope you'll uh, be with us all winter long. I'm Jim Sinekropi. Have a great rest of your weekend and a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you in South Seneca.